diversity is really about looking at people and seeing them for who they really are. And at that level, things are very simple, but in practice, we have so many filters that affect our way of looking at people, stereotypes and, and biases we may not be aware of, and uh, un the lack of understanding of other people's cultures. All these kinds of things can impede our ability to see other people the way we would like to be seen ourselves. And so that's what diversity is about as a project. Inclusion is just what it sounds like. Inclusion is making sure that everyone uh, feels included in the community uh, and feels like they belong. And this particularly concerns persons with disabilities. Now there are two kinds of disabilities. The one that we think about mostly are physical disabilities, blindness, mobility issues, and so forth. But there is another kind of mental disability that people think about less. And those kinds of mental, mental disabilities correspond to what we usually think of as mental illnesses. And this would include schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, social anxiety disorder, and a variety of others, including bipolar disorder. As a student, the resources are available primarily through the Office of Disability Services. And they deal with uh, uh, learning dis disorders. I think that's the, that's the one that is the most common in my experience, but also people uh, who are blind, who have mobility issues, and so on. They can also deal with mental disabilities along the same lines that I've talked about. I think that young people who are diagnosed with some kind of mental illness, bipolar disorder for example, are puzzled, confused, uh, inclined to be in a kind of denial about it. I just want to be like anyone else, you know, I want to be normal. And they're not, uh, they're not old enough to realize that uh, nobody's normal, uh, that we all have, uh, have our own issues and, uh, and, and so on. And that makes them resistant to getting treatment for, uh, for mental illness. It can make them resistant to medication. Uh, it can make them resistant to, resistant to telling people that they have a mental uh, disability. Or they may not realize that what they have is a mental disability. And so that's the other issue. They may have this problem, they may acknowledge it, but they may not realize that it, it is a disability and therefore it is something that the university can help with and wants to help with. If you feel like something's wrong, work on the assumption that something very well may be wrong and don't hesitate uh, to get uh, assistance in terms of evaluating what your condition is uh, and getting diagnosed, properly diagnosed, if there is something um, that's um, uh, that is a problem uh, for you that you have to uh, have to deal with. Once you're diagnosed, then the Office of Disability Services can can help you, and they can help you in a variety of ways. One of which is to put you in touch with the mental health counselors, both within and outside the university, uh, that can assist you on an ongoing basis. Another one is that they can provide you with reasonable accommodations within the university environment. For people, for instance, who have anxiety disorders, uh, there are dogs, for instance, that provide emotional support. And uh, those dogs are especially trained for the, the purpose. They are a kind of uh, uh, emotional equivalent of a seeing eye dog. I've seen students with them in my classroom. Uh, and that's, a, that's an interesting, inventive way uh, to deal with the issue. You can also talk to people like me. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 1986, so that was the year before I began my, uh, my PhD studies, and I've been dealing with it um, ever since. Bipolar disorder amounts to a biochemical um, alteration in the brain's chemistry that sort of artificially elevates a person's mood and depresses a person's mood. And so with bipolar disorder, the, um, uh, the back and forth goes from highs to lows, and the highs and lows can be quite severe unless, um, unless you've got medication and other kinds of resources to, uh, to deal with it. And it's not a one-size-fits-all disability. I have talked about it to people for years. In any class that I teach, I find a pedagogically appropriate moment to let, people, let my students know 
that I have bipolar disorder and statistically in a class of 100 students one of those students at least has been or will be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. What that means is that a student who's out there who has bipolar disorder now knows that the professor in front of them has bipolar disorder and is high functioning and can do their job day to day and so forth and this helps to convince them that they themselves are not doomed to be broken people because they aren't doomed to be broken people. It also creates uh, an environment or a situation in which they can come to me and talk to me and earlier this week I had a student who did that very thing uh, and being able to talk to someone uh, with a disorder like this and get their perspective on it, what it is like, how to handle it and so on can be a calming, reassuring thing for some, especially for somebody who was recently diagnosed with it and may not know quite what to make of it and may not know with whom to share the information. Which gets at another issue and that is the, 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 the stigma associated with the mental illness, both perceived and real. I think that although you might be inclined to keep the fact of a mental illness to yourself, you got one, the benefits of disclosure outweigh whatever benefits you might attribute to keeping it to yourself. As I've said, if you disclose that you have a mental illness to the proper people, you can get assistance from the university. But there's also this. Let's say that you have a mental illness and you have friends. You always have to wonder, what would they think of me if they knew that I had a mental illness? Would they feel differently about me or what? And that can, that can keep you, you know, silent and kind of in the closet about having a mental illness, but it creates a sense of anxiety and a sense of, of potential shame about your condition that really isn't warranted. Because what I have found in my experience is that when I, when I let people know that I have bipolar disorder, they don't freak out. My friends don't turn away from me. By and large, I think people have a need to be needed. And so if you reach out to most people, they're going to reach back. And so trust that and try it out. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised.